everyone. Good morning. It is the 20th of May, a Tuesday morning, and you're joining me, Amaya, on Good Morning Sri Lanka. It's lovely to have you here this morning with us on the show. And I'm sure you're up and about getting ready for the day that's ahead of you. And there is, but there are some days where we feel that, you know, it's a chore to get up in the morning and you really don't want to do all the list of things that you have to do during the day and it involves your family, your friends, your co-workers. Sometimes you just feel like, giving it a rest and staying at home one of these days but unfortunately not many of us have the privilege of doing that there are certain things that we have to get done during the day but there really are times in life when you do need a friend when you do need someone to listen to you and to just hold your hand understand your problems without any sort of judgment without any sort of preconceptions just someone who will listen to you and understand what you're going through at that time and even if you don't have someone that you personally know handy at that particular moment there's always an organization here in Sri Lanka who has been willing to lend that caring ear to be that understanding ear when it comes to listening to any and all problems that you might have even if it's something that seems minor to you and this is an organization that has been active for the past 40 years in Sri Lanka and they've bef been befriending people for a very long time and they've made a change a difference in thousands of lives across the country during the past four decades and that is uh, talking about the Sri Lanka Sumitrayo organization of course and with us on the show today to speak about the work that has been done by this organization as well as the incidence of suicide here in Sri Lanka as well as how this situation can be addressed. We have with us two lovely ladies on the program this morning. Mrs. Lakshmi Ratnayaka, the director of the Sumitreo Rural Program as well as Mrs. Melanie Paranavitana, the immediate past chairperson of Sumitreo Sri Lanka. Good morning to the both of you. Good morning, morning Amaya. It's lovely to have you on the show this morning. It's lovely to be with you. I know and thank you for having invited us. Of course and I mean the work that you do is something that should really be admired and should be shared and people should be made aware of that there is an organization like this. I'm sure that they've heard the name, they've heard, they've seen the telephone number maybe on billboards in yes. the city but they may not be aware of really what this organization is and what how important the work that it does is. So maybe we can start with that. Let's, Sri Lanka Sumitrio, what is the organization about? Well, the, our primary objective, why we are here, is to to reduce suicide, the incidences of suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, because every day you read in the papers about people killing themselves because they are so deeply unhappy perhaps about, you know, about various things. And uh, we have been working in this field for about 40 years now. And when we first started, it was the, not when we first started 40 years ago, but say in 1995, it was the highest, we had the highest rate of suicide in the world in that 23 people were killing themselves every day. That is almost one person was dying by suicide every hour. In 1995? In 1995. Yes. And for each person who died by suicide, at least 10 others attempted but survived their attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. But now, 20 years later, it's 20 years, yes, 20 years later, uh, we have, we have reduced the incidences of suicide to uh, less than 20 per 100,000, from 47 per 100,000 in 95 to 20 per 100,000 now, so that uh, every so now each each suicide takes place every two hours or two and a half hours, every two and a half hours. So that's a significant reduction. Yes. But what is worrying is that the people who are attempting suicide has gone up. Oh, yes, it has gone up. We don't have any official statistics, but the rural program in which I work, we go out to all the hospitals, a lot of the rural hospitals, and we collect data from there. And we can see, come in the comparing that data over the past 15, 20 years, that the incidences of suicidal behavior, that is 
of attempted suicide is going up and up and up. But wherever the Sumitra have been working, and we have been now working now up to date, we are in working in about almost 50 villages mm -hmm. in, in the northwestern province and about 45 villages in the southern province in Kohua, in Lunugambe, Heratitsa Maharama area. And the villages where the Sumitra have been working, the incidences of suicide have come down drastically, quite a lot. I see. So there has been so a that, change. Yes, there has been a change. So though there are, you know, people ask us why do people commit suicide? It is a whole lot of reason, you know, there are lots of factors that contribute to a suicide, mm -hmm. that make a person suicide, you see, contribute towards that. But to prevent it, it's, it, it is a fairly manageable way we can prevent suicide so long as, you know, it's fairly manageable, I say, so long as there is no mental illness involved. If there is a mental illness involved, then there is professional help needed and we could send them to the professional people. But otherwise, just giving them attention, listening to people, talk, helping them to talk about what is going on in their life and what is hurting them, what is bothering them, um, and being totally non-judgmental totally accepting of the person, whatever that person may have done, gives such a huge, tremendous feeling of relief that that danger of suicide, of that of the of them committing suicide at that moment is past. Mm -hmm. And you can get over that hurdle. Uh, yes, you can get over that hurdle. Mm -hmm. Then face another day. Perhaps in time you may again feel suicidal. You see? Because if your lifestyle, if your life has not changed, you see? Then, so once the hurdle is passed, we help them to, you know, with our befriending and where they talk to us and with our discussions, we help them to see what they, what they could do about making their life a little better for themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not just help which comes at that moment, it's yes. something that you keep consistently giving them, is okay. it? Consistently giving them, but mm -hmm. that is in the rural areas mm -hmm. where our work is a little different, where we go into the villages, we go into homes, because the culture in the rural areas is very different to the urban culture. Rural culture is, you have to build up a relationship with the people I for see. them to trust you. Mm -hmm. And once they trust you, they will always turn to you for help. While in the urban areas, I think Mela, you should be able to tell them about the befriending in the urban areas, in the centers. Yes. Say uh, somebody comes, because that somebody has been going through a lot of stress, unhappiness while working, say, and uh, she can't, she doesn't know whom to talk to. She tried talking to a friend, but the friend, well, she wasn't really listening. She was maybe thinking of something else and she, she knew it, she's not listening to me. She tells her mother when she goes home, the mother was cooking and, well, she says, well, talk to me while I'm cooking. And she thinks, she's not really listening, she's, she's cooking. And so in the night maybe she'll be crying herself to sleep. And somehow somebody, she has seen an advertisement and then she says, I'll try Sumitriyo. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they do, but I'll try as a last resort. And she goes to the center. And there comes a volunteer. She smiles and welcomes her in. And so she thinks this is not so bad. She, and then they say, come sit down. And then another volunteer comes and uh, the volunteer is introduced. He says, 
uh, I am so and so and uh, shall we go into a room and have a talk and she's taken to the room and because she concentrates so much on the caller, we call them callers because we don't call them clients, we used to call them clients but we call them mm. callers. So and very the the volunteer from the time the moment they are in the room she focuses and she has a look because our volunteers are chosen for their kindness the, for their feelings of compassion wanting to help somebody in distress mm -hmm. so it comes sort of naturally and because they are trained so she perhaps she doesn't want to talk she doesn't know how to talk but she waits and then suddenly she may start talking and then the volunteer listens listens with her total total hundred percent concentration mm -hmm. and the, the caller realizes this this person in front of me is truly listening and she unburdens and tells her everything that is has been bothering her and maybe she starts crying and maybe she has something that she couldn't really talk to anyone about mm -hmm. but we are unshakable we don't judge and once they talk and this man can go on for one hour one and a half hours and then we ask them while they're talking and at any point did you ever think of ending your life and then she says yes because that was something really deep deep down inside she didn't want to bring it out mm -hmm. and then she goes on and you know when they unburden they feel what do they feel they feel someone is listening and they feel more relaxed of course. more able to to really see the whole situation in a clearer light mm -hmm. and so this befriending goes on and if the volunteer feels that the caller is still feeling not so good mm -hmm. It can continue for a longer period say it comes again and again and we keep say we say we will call you at eight o'clock we definitely we never let that call down we call at eight o'clock and we keep to that promise mm -hmm. until the caller is able to stand on her own feet and is feeling better we are with the caller this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, thing that you are doing here in Sri Lanka and the work that you are carrying out has helped I'm sure so many thousands of people and continues to do that and it really is a relationship that's built on trust, it's built on confidentiality and it's also built on I guess from the point of the volunteers genuine love of what they do and genuine yes. want to give back to others and to help others in some small way so I think we have a lot more to speak about and a lot more to discuss when it comes to this very serious issue of suicide here in Sri Lanka but right now we're going for a very short break do stay with us we'll be right back on good morning Sri Lanka